let's see. Okay, what the hell? Okay. Um, wow. Yeah, it's a little dark. All right, all right. I'm back. Yeah, I didn't make one yesterday. I could have just done something. I should have done at least like a little one. Uh, what the hell am I looking at here? Yeah, I, oh man, I, I, I have so much crap to share. I, but I made one earlier today while I was walking to work and I deleted the damn thing by accident. I think it was like 13 minutes or something, but I thought it was kind of hilarious and informative. I was trying to speak on a number of topics, like women and, and, and society, and I'm not sure if I touched upon the book though. I wanted to, the book, you know, I wanted to share that, how to write, and, um, but I also wanted to make a video on, I don't know, I think I'm just, I don't know, I'm not getting any views, people, damn it, and, uh, no incentive to, you know, although it's only been like a month, actually it's been nine months because I, no, I wasn't pregnant, I, um, but I, 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 um, what the hell did I do? I, um, yeah, I did a video back in January. No, that was nine months ago. When the hell was that? I had to do plumbing work under the sink, and I still have to actually do plumbing work. I don't know. The damn the damn sink is leaking. The sink is leaking again. I don't know why the hell it's leaking. I need to put it like an extension coupler on it though. I have to go to the hardware store and get one, get something that'll be appropriate. But it was working great. It was working fine. I said, oh, this is working great. It's working fine. So I don't have to put like a catch bucket, a little plastic catch bucket down there. But I said, nah, don't trust me. Because it hasn't been, if, it, if it's been working for maybe, you know, two years or something straight, or five years, I'd probably feel safe. But uh, what the hell am I doing? Oh, yeah, is my inbox. I was looking at Hi-Fi magazine, but I wanted to talk about um, what I did with my my um, my stereo also because I got my old Magnapans out, and then I I I um I was trying to you know combine them with the um the B and Ws that I had since two thousand three, and and then my Magnapans I had since two thousand eight, and um, that I stripped down. I loved looking at them. They, they do, they did look a lot, you know, more elegant with the covers on there, like the cream covers. They, they really looked impressive, you know, like these flat panels. They look, I thought they looked sophisticated. So I had them set up with, I, I think it would have looked better with a turntable because I had the, uh, the old Jolita. I think I got that one in 2005. Um, the 202V tube amplifier, the EL34s, four EL34s in push-pull mode, and um, what the hell else did I get? I mean, what the hell else? Oh, yeah, it uses the 12AX7 and 12AT7 for driver tubes and preamp tubes. Yeah, I think I spoke in length about that, how I changed them from uh, the Chinese tubes to, um, what? because I had one back in the 90s. And I and I, but it, one channel went bad that I, that I bought from um, what the hell was that J and R Music World and it used to be downtown Manhattan, and I remember they they left it on though for like a year I think it was sitting there for a year it might even have been more, but I think it was about a year, but I don't think they had a speaker hooked up to it though I think they just had it on because they say it'll damage one of the uh, output transformers if you don't hook up, uh, you know, if you don't have a load, a speaker load on it. So um, you don't need an input, you know, you like a turntable or a CD player or any crap like that, but you need a speaker load, you know, on the, uh, on the output transformers or they'll become damaged because I noticed I started getting more static, you know, and, uh, but I think I sold that thing to someone I think it was actually Park at Park Audio, Park Avenue Audio. I think they're on 29th Street. I'm not sure if they're still there because I walked by there a couple of times. Not often, though. And uh, I think a couple of months ago, maybe, I don't know, it might have been six months ago. And because uh, I went to pray at my favorite church for, for fortune and fame and, and, and good health and for the rest of the world also for everybody. I swear I prayed for everybody to have a wonderful life. So I swear I think it, it might be working because, you know, well, a little bit. I'm going to have to go back and pray more, though, you know, for more good fortune for everyone on the planet. I figure why the hell not.
I just really earn some brownie points with God. <laughs> yeah, you, you do what you can in this life. But, um, yeah. So, uh, I wish I kept it, though, because I could get that baby to go creamy smooth. But I think it was the right channel, though, that began to, like, you could hear static. I was afraid of the damn thing. I think it was, like, the first tube amplifier. Oh, no, that wasn't the first one, actually. I think that was, might have been the second one. Because I had a Sonic Frontiers Anthem 1, but they went out of business. I don't know what the hell. I don't remember when the hell I had that. When the hell did I have that? Actually, did I have that? No, yeah, I think I had that one first. Oh, yeah, and then I traded it in. Because that one, one channel was going bad. Or both channels channels were going bad that used um el84s actually it was 25 watt per channel amplifier the uh, jolita was a 40 watt per channel amplifier um, but you didn't have to adjust the bias on the the uh, sonic frontiers i don't know what the hell happened to that company i think somebody bought them in like the late 90s or early 2000s or something but uh but yeah Let's see, what the hell is this though? Why don't I have a picture? Yeah, this is, I don't know if you can see it. Oh crap, I think, am I covering the damn microphone? Sorry, Wilson Audio Surprise World with a small loudspeaker with a big sound. Is the tune taught there? Yeah. Is that the gateway to high end or just a very expensive stand mount? Uh, the hell, Chris Thomas investigates. Yeah, because I think he's like a five inch or so, five and a half inch woofer or something. But it, but the it has a like a a long you know to the back of the speaker from the front of the speaker to the back. They don't make them as short. And I think it definitely makes a lot better sound because. Um, What's that damn company? Oh, Sonus Farber. They they do that with the um with the Chameleon B also. And um you know, it's like kind of triangulated smaller at the top and then larger at the bottom, so it can take uh, it can use better it takes better advantage of the volume, you know. And uh, and I noticed that ELAC, the B two the B six B point two six or B six point two I think it is. Like it has a lot of uh, depth, you know, from the front to the back, but like the old speakers, because I have the NHT, but I think that uses a four inch, a four inch woofer, a four and a half inch woofer, it might be four, four and a half inch, but like the depth from the front to the back, it's very shallow, and, and the bass is practically non-existent, but um, I, I've done a couple of experiments, because I pulled out my old, um, I bought this, what is that, Sonic Enhancer, by, I think it's BBE company, and uh, you can enhance, like, I don't know what the hell you're enhancing, something like the base, and the base, I just looked at the damn thing, and I, and I, and I, I um, coupled that with um, that other thing, the, 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 um, the Samson, I think it's the, 20, the D2500, and a 32 channel, um, you know, like it's it's not it doesn't have thirty two channels per side, but it's like thirty not thirty two channel thirty two frequencies, you know dual band they call it because it it controls both channels at the same time, and um, it it definitely makes a difference because I'm able to cut out all the mid range that's totally useless, especially on the um, on both of those speakers on the the tiny NHT because it's like I think it stands maybe seven or eight inches tall it has a really sweet um, soft dome tweeter though and because I was just listening to it on um, the ABC what the hell is that um, the look of love that CD and um, I swear to God I've been playing it for like a several days because I've been trying to like you know energize the different speakers energize their um, well you know the speakers themselves. And uh, the drivers and their um, and their crossovers. So um, what the hell am I doing? What the fuck am I looking at? <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. And uh, but I was cursing up a storm though, this morning. So I'm kind of glad I got rid of that because you guys. I don't want you guys to know the real me. But um, but yeah. And uh, what the hell am I talking about? Yeah. The um, yeah. I was using that equalizer, and it's a, it has DSP. I never. I, I never, because I never read the instructions on the damn thing, because it's kind of thick. I don't even know where the hell they are, but it should be around the house somewhere. I need to read the instructions on how to maximize the sound, because it has like a 
bunch of options. I, I should take a picture of it. Did I cut it off? I'll do it later. But um, but I have like the the Magna Pants. I have them. The, it's the MMG, like the cheapest ones. And uh, I don't know when they first got them. They didn't seem like they were that bad, but there was just something there that wouldn't. They wouldn't. Um, they wouldn't perform. I don't know. They wouldn't blossom. You know, they, it seems like they just got worse and worse. I tried them with different amplifiers. Never really a super powerful amplifier. Because he was saying, I think you need at least 40 watts or something like that. And it, oh, no, I'm not sure if this is... It, it, it's like you, you need to new, need to use amplifiers anywhere from 40 watts to 150 watts. And that Jolita was like at the bottom of the barrel because that was 40 watts. It didn't really do a great job, you know, on any of the speakers, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah, but when I had when I had it hooked up years ago, the the old one, um, I was using it with the BMW, the what was that the DM602? I think it was a digital monitor. That's what the DM stands for. And that the uh, yeah BMW Bowers and Wilkins, the 602. Or I thought that speaker was too damn boomy. It uses a, I think it was a six and a half inch driver, and um, it had this. But it was like it was all black and it had like this yellow. Um, um, mid mid bass driver and the and the um the metal dome tweeter like i believe it's aluminum metal dome tweeter they had like this little attenuator that would go across i think i got that one back i don't know when the hell did i get that thing maybe like 96 97 or something like that i think and uh, might have been yeah i think that's when that was 96 97 um, or 95, uh, no, I think it may have been 95, 96, but, um, but yeah, and, uh, but I thought it was too boomy, you know, but I, I, and I had it on stands, I might have, because I think I hooked that up the first time I got it, let me see, did I, yeah, actually, did I use that with, um, no, I don't think I used it, so I had this TAC receiver, and, um, because I really, I really wasn't into what the hell made, I didn't really know what, you know, like, really didn't understand high-end amplifiers or what was considered, you know, a musical amplifier. I think the closest I'd come to that was, like, I'm not sure if it was the late 80s, early 90s. I remember they were, everybody was raving about the creek, and I think it was, like, 550 bucks, but they kept improving on it and raising the price. I think it finally went up to, like, $1,500 and $2,000 because they kept improving, you know, the internal electronics on it. So, but I noticed that most of the good-sounding amplifiers, they, 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 they're running in the area of, like, two grand. You know, that's, like, the start of where you have... I mean, you can probably still get some crappy stuff, but to get, like amplifiers that were closer to no compromise because i remember stereophile before they started saying that everything sounds great you know back in the 90s um they 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 reviewed the the what the hell was that company um yeah, mccormick yeah the, the the point five i think that was 105 watts per channel and they were claiming how that was class b but knocking on the door of class a you know, in terms of if you guys are familiar with high-end audio, if you read those magazines, you know, like um, Stereophile, The Absolute Sound. I'm not sure if Stereo Review is still around. I used to read that, and I thought I knew about stereos and things like that. Because a friend of mine, who was like 15, he had a, a Macintosh 70 watt per channel. I forgot the name of it, though. That thing was kick-ass, and, 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 um, and he had these Advent speakers that just sat on the floor. These things sound killer because it uses like this plastic. I remember, I'll never forget the way that thing looked. It used this, um, um, a, a 10 inch woofer. It was like the perfect size. That thing made beautiful sound. Killer bass, just really thumping bass. Perfect. Now, not too boomy, not too light. You know, just absolutely perfect. But it's that speaker had this had these ridges in it. You know, around. I have, I don't I haven't seen speakers like that. You know, lately. I mean, just, they had like these perforations on top of the little ridges, but perfectly uniform. And this orange tweeter, this orange plastic tweeter. And I've been looking for that. I've seen that. I think I saw one. And um, this is like when I was like long, long time ago. And um, but I, I saw one because I, I I bought this. Um, that CD changer, that Sony CD changer back in 96, and uh, yeah, it was just like two at that time, but um, 
and I saw I had to get the you know the RCA outs on that damn thing repaired because I think they were too tight or something like that and they had to change that I remember I went to that shop or someplace on Flatbush Avenue I think they're out of business now though like near Avenue H or Avenue J and um, but I remember walking in there and they had that same advent speaker but it had a green Instead of an orange plastic tweeter, it had a green plastic tweeter. And it wasn't like just a smooth, it must have been, it was a pretty, him. you know, it's like you really can't trust your memory. But I, I knew, I think it was definitely larger than like one inch. It must have been a two inch tweeter, you know, and it had like almost like two sections, like an inner section and then an indented and then like an outer section, And the, if I'm not mistaken. But it, it was like really weird. It was green. But um, oh, I went to this this thrift shop um, near um, uh, where the hell is that in Red Hook, near the Lowe's in Red Hook, and they had these what the hell is that Dynaco? I, I didn't know this the Dynaco because they every time some the every time someone you know uh, write about or mention like on YouTube the Dynaco seventy. I, I, I thought they were referring to the amplifier though. Um, I think it was made in where the hell was that that that. The country um, that um, Denmark, I think, was it Denmark? I think that's when it was made. I was tempted to buy it. I think they wanted 125 bucks for the pair. And uh, I said, wow, this, this is like really cool vintage stuff. But you, I couldn't take the, um, the, the grill came, comes off, but I, I, was, I found, it, found it a little difficult to try and remove it. And then I, I just went to check it on, um, on YouTube or, or I think it was either YouTube or, um, or, um, or what the hell is that? I Googled it, and the um, the people like, uh, was, oh no, actually I think it was eBay, and uh, it was hovering around the same price. Some of them were a little more expensive, like two hundred bucks for the pair. I'm very tempted to to try and you know, scrounge some money or go to like the Verrazano Bridge or the. George Washington Bridge, because I think they're more rich people in Jersey, to go beg for money, get a cup, say, can you help out a fellow American who wants to buy a pair of vintage, um, what the hell is the name of that, um, Dynaco, um, made in, I keep, I'm, I keep thinking, Danies, like those, those leathers that, that you sell for motorcycle riders, but, you know, it's full, full body leathers, or, Denver, I don't know, um, but I, then I try and think of Shakespeare, um, what is that, Shakespeare, um, what the hell is the name of that, that play that Shakespeare did, um, Denmark, yeah, there's, there's something rotten in Denmark, yeah, I remember that, because, um, my favorite actor, Kenneth Branagh, he played, um, I forgot who the hell he played, but he was like the lead actor, and I watched that that video over and over again because I have it around here someplace on VHS, and uh, not that I was around when VHS was you know all the rage, but um, I I couldn't understand what the hell he was saying. I had to just listen to it. It was like he was speaking a different language, and then all of a sudden one day after about five years of listening to it over and over again, I could understand what the hell he's saying. It's like, it, but the you know the accent and the words and the way that Shakespeare writes it was like just bitching I could just listen to it even though I didn't understand a word he was saying I just absolutely loved it you know I said crap I wish I could speak like that you know in that in that tongue in that vernacular and things like that with that accent that would be totally cool okay I think I've gone off topic again. Well, kind of, because the whole Denmark thing. But I think on eBay they were selling it for like two hundred bucks or something. But I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't pull the grill off. But I was thinking about maybe I should have. I'm wondering if I should have used my key, but I didn't want to damage it or anything, you know, and uh, get something sharp, like but not puncturable, like with a round tip, so I won't puncture anything. So I can get a look at the speakers because the speakers they had. At that place, that thrift shop, that um, it's like I mean, the the speakers that I saw on eBay, those things were like they're all molded and they had like crusty white stuff on it or something, like it was you know some kind of weird um, mildew or mold or something. The things looked terrible, and people were selling it for you know 
think I thought it was kind of expensive, but yeah, um, and I, I was thinking, boy, these might sound good, because, but I've never heard anybody talk about the speakers. I didn't even know they made speakers, Dynaco, you know, because yeah, the Dynaco 7, the amplifier, that's what I was thinking about, but I always thought it came out in a kit. I, th I thought it came in a kit. That's, only, that's the only way I remember people speaking about it all the time. Oh, yeah, Dynaco 70 kit. It sounded great. And, uh, or maybe they were talking about the, the actual amplifier that wasn't a kit, but they'd never indicate that specifically, that it wasn't a kit. But I, but most people would always refer to it as a kit, though. And because uh, I know they actually came out with another one, a later one. I forgot what company. I'm not sure if it's Dynaco or another company that bought the rights to it. Something I saw it somewhere. I'm not sure whether it was. It might have been the magazines, or and it might have been um, YouTube. But I haven't like seen one in stores or anything. But yeah, I think they came out with a later one. But I think those crazy bastards are charging a crap load of money for it, though, like five grand or some crazy this like that was like viciously expensive but uh but yeah okay how the hell did i get off on this again um yeah i was talking about the so i'm using a sonic enhancer and that equalizer that samson i think that thing was like 2500 bucks and i think that sonic enhancer was like 89 dollars but i just i got it i remember seeing one on canal street wait was that canal street because there's one on flatbush avenue in brooklyn but I think it was an electronic store, but they used to sell like Walkman and, and DJ equipment, you know, and, and, you know, crap like that, like mini disc players and cassette players. But they went out of business, though. I don't know. I think, as a matter of fact, I think they might be a Cohen, Cohen fashion optical. But I think they went out of business long before that one came into business. But um, but yeah, but just the, 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 the quality of the sound, because I have the... Um, the um the magna pan sitting on like a, a a piece of wood and then i use like these long screws i just put them through you know in three places i'm not sure if i should do four places but i don't know there's something about the three that just seems really totally cool and and um you know audio file-ish for, for some reason because like I, I see that you know in a lot of instances like in magazines or when you go into show audio showrooms and things like that they'll just have have it sitting on like three spikes or three plinths i think I think that's what they call them, if I'm not mistaken, and it looks totally awesome because I remember that I remember seeing that the B and W um, speakers like that they had like several speakers, you know, some were floor floor models, floor standards, and and then they had like the that 602, and I think they had um, that that. I think it's the 302 or the 303. I think because I got the 303, but mine's like in or like a lighter color walnut. But they had them like in this magazine in all black, and then they had like these gold. I forgot the name of that company. Those damn things were like 300 bucks or some crazy crap like that. But they were about I don't know maybe two maybe two to four inches tall. They looked beautiful. They were like totally gold. They had the black speakers. That I specifically remember that that 602 that DM 602 too that I had sitting on top of that with a this bitchin' looking black stand and then those gold spikes sitting, you know, where the pointy ass pointy part is facing up toward the speaker. I've never seen anything more elegant than that. But um, but yeah tonight so I changed from the three oh three I wonder if those damn, I don't know, it was too boomy though. I really didn't like the bass. But the, the NHT, but that four inch tweeter, a uh, four inch speaker and one inch soft dome tweeter. I'm, I'm thinking about just connecting that soft dome tweeter. But it doesn't sound bad though. It really sounds bitching. And, uh, but those, those magna pans, those things, they're, they're really awesome. Because I'm actually using that with that, with that 15 watt per channel, um, that Parts Express amplifier. I cannot believe how this thing is for me it is it sounds kick-ass high-end audiophile i swear to god it does sweet things to the to the mid-range and to the high frequencies and things like like cymbals and and you can hear like um um like i don't know like synthesizers that 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 you know that cover various frequencies and it's just it's indescribably sweet i, I haven't been like forced to sit there, I, I can't get up. You know, I was just sitting there through several songs, and I couldn't get up. I couldn't leave because it was just so beautiful, and it was like totally three dimensional. Where m most of the music is coming from the center. I remember Paul McGowan talking about that, and uh, oh yeah, I wanted to mention something about 
Steve Gutenberg, though, Gutenberg or Gutenberg, he was saying some really good things. Actually, he was saying the same thing that I was thinking of. I thought he stole my idea, though. This, this bastard secretly listening to my, I don't know, maybe, <laughs> because, but his was like, I think it was 2018, March 2018 or something like that, so that's, oh, that's like last year. I said, but I don't remember him doing that, you know, because I was watching his videos religiously because I thought they were pretty cool. I'm oh, sorry about that. I'm just showing you the dark crap. It's got to be really crappy. But, um, but yeah, he was talking about matching different speakers to, to cover a broader range, and I, was, I just like, I, I, I kind of just um, discovered that, like last, I think last year I tried it for the first time. I used three different speakers, like the Magnapans, the the, um, the Chameleon Bees, the Sonus Faber, and the um, and the what the hell is that other thing? I, mean, I think I spoke about this in the other video. The um, the the Elac, this the B six point two, and I, it was it sounded sweet, but I noticed because I was using it with that M two Si and the Topaz CD player, which sounded really nice. It really, but it really covers such a range. I think that's like four speakers. Is that four? No, three speakers. And because I, I actually I use the NHTs with it, but I noticed no difference though with the NHT. I really couldn't tell a difference because those three speakers, the Chameleon B, the Sonus Faber, the Elac um, B6.2, and the and the uh, Magnapan MMG, they cover such a range, you know. But then I tried it again, but I moved it away from like the the, the long wall, which really wasn't a long wall because I'm really at one end of the long wall. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll see like how. Um, I explained how it was closer to like the kitchen and the refrigerator, but I'm wondering because I was using a um, well, no, it wasn't actually. I was using um, a plug from the back of the house, and I was running it through that. What the hell was I running it through? The the acoustic research that power strip is it it's a slight. It's kind of it works. It kind of it smooths out the music like a power conditioner. But then I paired that with the because I think when the hell did I buy that? I think. I think I bought that damn thing back in 2000, maybe 2001, had it sitting around, and I bought two of them just in case, you know, it worked really good. I think it was like 29 bucks for two, some craziness like that. Was it 29 bucks each? It was definitely worth 29 bucks each, though, but um, but then I, I, I just bought that, what the hell did I buy that, that, that pile? Um, um, what the hell is it? I think it's, I forgot the number on it, but it's on. Got it from Amazon. It's like a hundred bucks. It really made a difference. I swear to God, because I tried it without and with, and uh, with the chameleon bees, and um, it really became like um, holographic. You know, it's like it's like the speaker disappeared. I'm, I'm like I must I must be sitting like three feet away from it, you know, and it's sitting on the floor, but it doesn't sound like the music's coming from the floor. You know, where, you know, like other speakers, this, this, the music was all over the place. It's like right on top of it, you know, beside it, like across, slightly across the room, like three or four feet. These different, um, these different instruments. It was just like, it's frighteningly beautiful. But, um, but today, when I was listening to the combination of the Magnapan with the uh, NHTs with the four inches and the, you know, the MMGs, and I'm, I'm not using any kind of fancy cables. I'm thinking, wow, imagine if I'm using fancy cables to write but you have to get the, the right cables with those two power conditioners, you know. And um, but it, it's sounding kick ass with that crappy. Um, oh, yeah, and I'm still using that. I think I took a picture of it. You'll see it if you visit any of my other vlogs. You'll see the um, the um, the TX CD player. And uh, but that's that's the one that I use. I've never forget that but that Jolita. And I was again, I was using like crappy cables, I was just using you know, regular oxygen free copper you know it was, it was there were speaker cables you know but 16 gauge speaker cables i'm using like all kinds of crazy gauges i'm wondering if i change those gauges though will it improve use um, 16 gauge throughout i think that's what i have yeah and um the, the oxygen free copper i'm not sure if that makes a difference because but it, it sounds it might you know i haven't tried it but i love experimenting crap i'm almost hitting 30 minutes now I can't believe I'm yakking. What the hell all this time is going? You know, I, I didn't think I had anything to say. Maybe because I, I didn't do one on Sunday, but I did one on, I think I did 
two or maybe three on Saturday. But um, but yeah, I got I'm gonna do a, a video on that, you know, a follow up video, when, um, you know, because I, I I was always like a kind of um, oh that that was the other thing I wanted to I, the thing that gave me incentive to pull out the old CD play uh, the uh, equalizer because I I was watching those videos that Paul McGowan does from PS Audio and um, still kind of you know jury's still out on whether that that noise harvester really works or not because I noticed because I I'm, I'm, I'm gaining I'm getting power at the front of the house closer to the actual um, the fuse box they were saying that you know or the circuit breaker box that how you should be as close to that circuit breaker box as possible but I remember doing this in the past and it sounded horrible you know, I thought I, I, I don't know because I changed my uh, I changed the wall receptacles to hospital grade wall receptacles like back in the 90s was it the 90s or the early 2000s and I, I noticed when I changed that in that room because that's like besides the room you know the one of the bedrooms I used to have everything set up in talk about near field I was like I swear to God it must have been like three or four feet of away from the speakers but it sounded kick-ass though but um but yeah shit i'm 30 31 minutes practically now but um but yeah um yeah i'm gonna wrap this up soon but it's like i'm trying to remember whether i included everything because in case like anybody wants to try making changes i'm, I'm trying to be as descriptive as possible because it's totally awesome when you actually make those changes and you just notice the difference but i noticed the um, the the bass definitely is not as good as the 303 because one of those speakers, one of my woofers, my mid woofers have gone bad though. I don't know what the hell caused that. So I spritzed it with a little bit of WD-40. It seemed to loosen it up a little, but sometimes it goes out. But these these definitely, I thought those were too boomy, so I used the equalizer. I, I dropped all of the bands to the complete bottom. I'll show you that later. I even got rid of the high frequency. I'm not even sure if damn things working or if it's still bypassing but it sounds really great i swear to god the mid-range and, and everything but it's not it doesn't have the bass that i'm looking for but sometimes it'll touch upon it you know and it's like wow this is what i've been looking for you know in the mids and the highs but the bass it's a little lacking but some notes though it'll hit some of those notes on that um like where, uh, where smoky lives i think it is and king without a crown king, yeah king without a crown um, by ABC, and um, it will kick ass, though. It'll just grab those notes, and, like, again, most of it's coming from the center, and then uh, and then it'll go three-dimensional because they'll have some instruments that'll just come out of the left channel and some instruments that'll come out of the right channel. But that's why I disagree with... Um, yeah, I think he was saying... Wait, did I mention that Paul McGowan was saying how, like, uh, someone wrote in... He did a letter where someone wrote in that you know would it be good to use an equalizer and he was like dead set against it and i said you know what let me try my equalizer and i tell you he's, he's dead set wrong i, I swear to god because it gives you so much more power you know over the uh over your speakers you know and and so if your speakers are too bright or if they're too mid-rangey or something like that or if they're even too bassy or too muddy you have the opportunity to boost and cut you know those frequencies but the thing i like about it is that there's so many different combinations that you can try you know and i think that's i don't know that i find myself just mired in that i don't just sit and listen i don't know maybe it's because it's just not this this the music that i like you know the sound the sound quality the texture of the music just isn't there but today it was definitely there it was kick ass i thought that you know having that thing hooked up because i had the that little amplifier and the cd player that that uh, 15 watt per channel um, parts express amplifier it's like the cheapest one they have it's, it's battery powered or it has a wall ward i tried it battery powered or the wall ward and it doesn't seem to make a difference but it might have been the, the speaker placement also because i have the speakers placed more you know uniformly and equally from side to side and things like that instead of like closer to a wall where i had them later where when i was sitting i couldn't hear any bass there was absolutely no bass when i stand up mounds of bass that was like i've never experienced anything like that with this system but it's not doing that anymore and if i move back to the far wall that's where all the bass was it's just crowded back there it was like the weirdest crap i swear to god but um i said you know i gotta change this i gotta fix this crap and make the bass 
better, you know, and, and so I'm, I'm, you know, because I had the speakers, they, they, they were probably like maybe a foot, foot and a half, might have been two feet from that wall, you know, from the back wall. And um, I'm wondering if that had an effect, almost like a concert, you know, where it's reflecting off of the ceiling and the sides. But one, one side, it was like maybe two or three feet from a wall there. And then the other side, the wall was like, I don't know, 10 feet away. It's like down the block there or something. There's basically no, no side wall. And then one had like a side wall right there, maybe. I don't know, maybe, it might have been three or four feet, actually. But... I know that's definitely got to make a difference. I didn't think it would make that much of a difference, but it made a big difference. So that's why I like to try and get all of this stuff out so people can try it. It's totally, you know, help. It's totally like rewarding and, and a hoot, I was going to say. It's going to say hilarious. I don't know why. That's it, not appropriate. That doesn't actually apply. But uh, but not hilarious, but extremely rewarding. I swear to God, when you when you hear the difference, even sometimes it can go bad, sometimes it can go good, you know. But I, right now it's just lacking a little bass, but it's but what little bass it has, it's it's extremely acceptable, you know. It's extremely wonderful. So, but it, it it's not too boomy. I, I've never. It's like the different speakers, uh, the um the, those three hundred threes, because I think I. It may have been because I disconnected the tweeter, though. You know, I wonder if that has an effect on it. But this one, it, it, it's not as bad, though. Okay, let me shut up. So don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment, I think, and lots of views. Damn it, this thing. What the hell happened to this thing? All right, bye.